Next, let's take a look at the detail screen uh, for a cache. So I'm going to pick Tom's Foolery here, uh, one of my favorite because of the little graphic. And uh, when you click on a cache, it brings up the detailed display, which gives you the full title. You have the latitude and longitude once again, the cache ID. This also shows you the container type, it's regular container, and difficulty and terrain uh, readouts. And you have the date that the cache was placed from the GPX file. In addition, there's a hint. If there is one, you can click on there and you'll see the hint displayed. If you don't like to see the, the hints displayed, then don't click and, and you won't see the hint, but it is there for your, your perusal. This button over on the right that you see is uh, a button which can be used to launch the GC Buddy program, which uh, is produced by another uh, vendor. And uh, we've collaborated together to provide some interoperability between our applications to make them be able to seamlessly switch back and forth. So if you have GC Buddy, uh, that button will actually launch the application. If you don't, it won't do much of anything. And if you want to get rid of that, you can go into the main iPhone settings and go down to iGeocacher, and you can uh, turn uh, the GC Buddy integration off, and you won't see that. Scrolling down, uh, you will see the description uh, information for the cache. And then beyond that, you will see the typical log information that's downloaded. You see the date, the uh, finder and uh, the uh, information about whether it's found, need, has a note, etc. and of course the log entry itself. And that's pretty much it for the uh, detailed display of uh, information within the uh, GPX file, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, details uh, that uh, you can get from uh, the uh, geocaching.com site. Now, you have some buttons up here at the top. Of course, the uh, uh, left angle bracket just takes you back uh, to your selection screen uh, where you can uh, pick another cache. And I should note that when you pick a cache, that's uh, so automatically selected as a target cache for the GPS screen, and we'll see that in just a moment. Now, there are uh, several other buttons up at the top, and one of the ones that you will probably use more than any other is the map button. And if you click on that, it brings up a display of your general vicinity and these cache pins. And you'll notice the pins have what I call little halos around them. You can turn that off uh, here and turn them back on. And the halos indicate your find status at this point. And the head of the pin is the, the cache type. You've got some controls here. We can zoom in and we can see that this is a multi-cache. And of course, if you click on the head of a pin, you'll get some information, uh, the cache ID, difficulty, and terrain and uh, uh, the title as much of it will fit as will fit and if you click on the detail button uh, you'll go back basically to the uh, detail information so that's kinda handy uh, for uh, mapping and uh, the map has three modes uh, you have a mobile mode here uh, which shows your typical mobile map you have a satellite mode which gives you the satellite overview and then you have, uh, we can turn the halos off, and I think it looks a little better. And then you have the hybrid mode, which is basically a combination of the satellite and gives you your road information for finding caches. So I think the map uh, feature is probably one of the most popular features uh, that uh, the new API and the 3.0 operating system uh, has allowed us to develop. Now, the Google tab will take you out to the actual Google map uh, for the cache, and I'm not going to demonstrate that here because it'll take us out of the application. You can also edit this particular cache, and by edit, uh, you you only have certain information you can change. You can add notes. You can determine which group you want the cache to go into, and we'll talk about groups in a minute. You can set a find and not found status, and that's a local status that has nothing to do with the find status that's on uh, the GC site. Although, if the cache does show up as found, you've already found it, that is you've logged it as found uh, and you've reloaded, uh, that information should automatically be picked up and reflected here. But this is primarily for the local database. Uh, you can actually insert the time into the note if you wish by just pressing the time button and that'll put in a time stamp. So here you see date, time, and here's your time zone. And of course you can delete a particular uh, entry here and, and whatever changes you want to save 
Uh, you can press the save button if you've entered stuff in here and you don't want to uh, save anything. You can just hit the cancel button and uh, return to the main screen. So there you can make some cache notes and those notes can actually also be exported uh, and we'll go over the export feature in a later video. And that pretty much wraps up the uh, cache detail. Uh, I will mention that the log button will actually take you to the GC site uh, to, if you have connectivity. Um, and for the logging of this particular cache, you'll have to log in, of course. And the GC button will actually take you similarly to the information, the GC page for that particular cache. So these two buttons, uh, assuming you have connectivity, will actually take you to in a web session uh, to the information for the cache and the GC site. You probably won't need that too often because essentially all the information you need is already right here. The logging is kind of nice if you like to do your logging in the field. I typically do when I get back to the car or if it's a convenient spot in a park, I'll sit down on a park bench and do it. Most, uh, most folks will find the map uh, button here the most useful. So that's pretty much the uh, detailed information on the uh, cache detail page.